Hello, welcome to Entertainment Extra with Joe Crawford, yours truly here on RemixTV.com. And I want to welcome our guest here. You can see she's sitting here right next to me, and she's written a book. She's very well known. She's uh, from Jamaica, here in Toronto, goes all across the United States. She's known all over the place. The book is called Whose Vagina Is It Really? Get your mind out of the gutter. It's not what it actually means. And uh, she's what we call the chocolate doll with the brains. And you can prob probably see the living truth of that. Sandy Daly. Sandy, welcome. How are Thank you? Thank you very much, Joe. Thanks for having me. Oh, no problem. Now, Sandy, you first of all, let's talk about you were born in Jamaica. What brought you up here to Canada? Well, my mom got married to my stepfather who had left um, Jamaica years before. And he lived in Saskatchewan. So, you know, when she migrated, I had to come with her as a 16-year-old child. So didn't ever have anybody else in Jamaica. So I came with my mom and my sister at the time. Okay, awesome. So, and then we've got you into our Canadian culture. I know, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> um, you here uh, do a lot of variety of stuff. You uh, mm -hmm. you uh, act, you uh, host, you're a writer, which we'll talk about your book in just a few minutes here, and uh, also column writings all across nor uh, North America and the States and Boston. But first of all, let's talk a little bit about your acting career. What are right. some of uh, the films that you've been in? Well, that was my first foray into the creative world. You know, I, I did a lot of stuff back in Jamaica, but when I came here... Um, I wanted to get into acting, so I took a lot of classes, and my first film um, was Another Planet. I got the lead role in, in Christine Brown's film, Another Planet. So that was my very first film, Out of the Gate. It got a lot of great reviews, and then I've done a lot of short films after that, but Another Planet was my first feature film role, and I got the lead role in that, so that nice. was crazy. Yeah, that awesome. was years ago. Was that the one that um, I was reading on your website, Sandy Daly, D A L E Y dot mm -hmm. com? Is that the one that you played the 60 year old woman in? No, that was after. That was the sweetest thing. Oh, so, okay. Christine Brown's Another Planet, I played a younger girl. And oh. then another one, I played a 60 year old woman. So, I like, you know, being versatile. I like breaking it up. I like characters. I'm yep. character driven. Very so. nice. And you are very versatile because uh, you host. A, uh, a radio show called The Daily Grind. Yes. And uh, that can be heard uh, syndicated in the States on 106.1 on one of the stations down there in Boston. But you also told me it's being picked up. Yeah, it is picked up right now on ESPN. Nice. So I have it in Atlanta. I have it also in North Carolina. I have it in South Carolina, Miami, and parts of Toronto as well. But definitely The Daily Grind is in Boston and now on ESPN on Sunday mornings. Nice. And what's The Daily Grind about? Well, I do a show just about anything that kind of is out there, whether it be current affairs or whether it be features with artists, you know. So I like to talk to people because I like to get to the, the heart of the matter. So I have music, yes, but it is um, in, interview driven. Nice. So I talk to hosts. I'll talk to like Richard Stevens. Then I'll talk to people that are authors. So I just kind of mix it up. And that's what The Grind is all about. Not what you think. <laughs> so it's yep. a daily grind, just grinding out all the information. I get everything out. Nice. Now you said, because uh, we are broadcast on the internet here worldwide, and right. majority of our listeners are in Canada. Mm -hmm. We have listeners in the States as well and worldwide. But uh, it is heard in Toronto. But how can people, say, across Canada, want to uh, listen to The Daily Grind? They can go onto my website. So it's sandydaily.com. I do actually podcast uh, okay. some of the shows, as well as MOC Radio, my syndicated home. Um, or you can go on Sundays. But just hit me up and see where it's going to be because it actually plays on MOC as well as on, like, when you're driving in the car nice. in Boston. So I have it in various places. Good, good. Now, um, what is your favorite place that you've uh, vis uh, been at? Because you've been in Boston, you're right. in New York, uh, Toronto, Jamaica. I, I, I would probably say Jamaica, but you would probably say otherwise. I actually like Jamaica yeah. a lot because that's my home. You know, I, I'm lucky that I came here first. I always say to people, if I'd gone to New York, then I would have been, I would have gravitated to that. But I came here first to Canada, and then so Jamaica is still my first home. And then I love New York, but I can't stay there too long. Right. You know, I, I love how busy it gets, but then I have to come back to the relaxation. And then when I come here, I was like, okay, I got to go again. <laughs> you know, so it's like a, it's very, very confusing life of Sandy Daly. You never know where I am. Man. But I like to kind of mix it up like that. There you go. Where in the world is Sandy that Daly? That is the question. That's what they always ask me. Where are you now? <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm in Canada. What? <laughs> I'm in New York. What? <laughs> you were just here just yesterday. Know, where did you go? I know. Well, actually, you're leaving again because yeah. I actually have some more meetings that I have to do and I do have to, to get some other things done but I do have to come back home because my children are here so yeah yep. awesome well your book that you've written is called whose vagina is it really the do's and don'ts for every single married gal and an instructive eye-opener 
for men. Now, this is pretty much, it's not dirty like you think it is. It's uh, a more of a relationship advice mm -hmm. book. And, uh, well, first of all, what got you into wanting to talk about relationships? Well, I actually write, um, you know, for a magazine in the U.S. And so what I do is I talk every single week about what happens to me if I'm going through some stuff. I'm feeling that I'm not that important. Somebody else must be going through something else. So the column is called Real Talk with Sandy. And I actually started writing years ago. But the way how I even got into column writing is because I actually sent it to a blog, a friend of mine that had a blog like four years ago. And the next thing I knew, a magazine had picked it up. Nice. And then, but the thing is, the story that they ran was, you know, where's my Valentine's or something like that. Gosh. My friend called me, goes, Sandy, I didn't know you were that desperate for a man. I go, what are you talking about? <laughs> they go, well, you, we see a column in the street hype newspaper and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, I can't believe this. So I look so desperate. So I <laughs> right. call up the editor and I go, how dare you take my column without my paper, without my article, without asking me? He goes, well, Miss, Miss Dale, I've been watching you write. And I'm like, oh, you're right. You want to write for me? I said, okay, all right, fine. No worries. No worries. So that's how we got into that. But nice. I like talking about what happens to me because it actually helps me Joe quite a bit so I'm not there sitting there all booting on getting upset yeah and it's like therapeutic too then very much so so that's what once I write something I it's released nice you know, someone will come to me they'll see me in New York and go like Sandy that article you wrote which one I don't remember <laughs> I released that you yeah. know what I mean or yeah. who is Mr. SK or you know why you like men with bow legs I don't know <laughs> <laughs> there you go and uh, you're not just right out there right now all right and um then talk about relationships then. Um, are you, not to get really personal, but are you single or are you taking? I'm single. I'm yeah. single and I know people, yes, but nobody has jumped forward and said, um, let's get it. Or just, I'm kind of picky right now. Let's just right. put it, be, like, be honest with you. Because I know what it is that makes a real good relationship. I've learned my lessons, Joe. Right. And so I'm not jumping into anything. We're not getting to know that person very well for a long period of time. You know, women, we always try to get Mr. Right or find some man to make us feel whole. I, I'm not in that category. So unfortunately, men will see that and like, okay, so this girl is not going to be easily played. Right. But at the same time, I'm not like sitting there going, okay, I don't want, I don't think that there are good men out there. Because I do exactly. think that there are great men out there. Just that... We have to connect, you know. Right. So that's basically what uh, whose vagina is it all is it really is all about. Well, what makes a good relationship then? Communication, you know, and 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 compromising. That's what we are lacking these days. Because why why did relationships work donkey years ago? Right. You know what I mean? Everybody's kind of switching very quickly. The internet has made us, or internet dating itself. I don't believe in internet dating. Right. Um, has made us think that we can go on to the next thing very quickly. No one's sticking things through, and I don't think that we are at that place that we used to be years ago. I mean, why do, did our forefathers have a marriage of 30, 40, 50 years? Right. We can't even stay in a relationship for two years. Yeah. So that's why I don't believe, I try to remain as celibate as possible. <laughs> <laughs> as long as that way, I want to get to know somebody to see what they're all about. And what, what do you specifically look for than like say for, for yourself for a man then? Right. I like hardworking men. I don't care whether you are a lawyer, a doctor, an Indian or a chief, a carpenter. I don't care. I just want you to have your own goals and try not to control Sandy because you, it's just it's going to be difficult. Right. So I, I like a man that allows me to be me um, and at the same time I want you to be you because I think that once you're a whole person once we get together Joe then we can be have a better relationship. So a lot of us we're looking for men to make us you know, a, a whole person. You can't have that. Make your own money, uh, have your own job, like do your own thing, and then that person will understand what you're all about. Why are women then, it seems to be, and I don't want to blame the fault right. on women, but men, they, they find this Mr. Wonderful, this Mr. Mm -hmm. Right, and, but they get stuck in a hole, and then... Because they're afraid to try to... I mean, they always think that they need a man, Joe, to, to validate themselves. And, and they're afraid to try and give it another shot with somebody else. I'm not afraid to do that. But that's why I always take the time to get to know somebody. And there's nothing wrong with dating. I never used to date years ago. Right. You know, men do it all the time. Yeah. Women, we feel that we need to, you know, stick with somebody right away. So what I try to encourage women to do is not to have fast intimacy with somebody. Try to get to know somebody first. Um, Think with and this head and not that head. And not the other there. head, yeah, yeah. because, and, and, and so that you get a chance to know that person because at the end of the day, the sex should be great, but it doesn't, at the end of the day, for a long-lasting relationship, it's not what's going to keep somebody with you. Right. Okay, so then we have the do's and don'ts then for every single married gal and an instructive eye-opener for men. Right. If... If they're already married, then what are some of the do's then? Like, I mean, they're, even they're with married, married, even with married women, like, definitely. What are some of the do's then to keep it going then? Um, put yourself first at all times, and I don't mean like to say to put your kids on the chopping block or right, right. But a lot, 
And it's a great question you ask. A lot of women, once they become married or become mothers, and this has happened to me, you forget about yourself. You don't have your goals anymore. You don't have your own dreams anymore. Yeah. You're living constantly for somebody else. And God forbid if that husband leaves you or when that kid, those kids grow up. I mean, when my kids grew up and I was sitting there going, oh, my God, what do I do with myself now? Right. I had nothing. Yeah. And I had to find myself back well, again. That's so true because um, I speak from personal experience with some exes I've had. Yeah. And their mothers and whatever also seems those are the kind of girls that I attract. <laughs> They, they were like the dates or the, the, the partners that they've had before, mm -hmm. whatever else, kind of forced, not forced them, but made them decide to drop out of school, like drop out of exactly. college or whatever else. So when, and they want to better themselves because they probably think, well, even though they're dating me or whatever, I was not saying that's going to be a long lasting relationship, right. but they want to better themselves. And I say, go ahead. And they're like, are you serious? Like, are you right? Because they're like, not used to that. Yeah, I'm like, no. Like, honestly, like, do that. I mean, do you? I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna be around forever. I like to be around forever, which I have the exes, so of course I haven't been around right. forever. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, and but they're all shocked. It's like better yourself. Go for it. Right. A lot of women don't want to do. They don't understand that. So we, I mean, you give up on your own dreams so quickly because society and and pressures. They kind of it tells you that you have to do this, and you don't. I'm saying still go to school. Still do stuff that you like because for your own self, your own self-esteem. And at the end of the day, you never know what's going to happen. As I said, I had to really sit down and find Sandy back again. And you, now I'm so happy that my kids are grown. I can travel as much as I want to. And people are like, you want another child? Uh-uh, -oh, no, no, I can't. <laughs> you did I don't, it, you've I done don't, it. I've done it. <laughs> have to as a good mother you have to be in your children's life my children are constantly telling me that i'm bothering them too much but <laughs> that's what that's mothers like do that's what know. mothers do so if you want to be a good parent you have to give your children time yeah. so i always encourage women to kind of take the time i wish you know a lot of women would take the time to kind of get themselves organized first you know a career wise financially get everything in order so when you do have the children you've done that as well as you can actually focus on the kids so don't just jump into relationships that can come after right do you think it's because some of the generations like the, like this newer generation my generation even right. the younger generation that's younger than me they're not learning it properly of uh being in a proper relationship or they're just jumping in too soon and just for that flame, they're jumping in too being, soon it's not being taught then they're jumping in too soon and we're, mothers are not telling their daughters especially to listen take the time you know, when you get older, 70s, 60s, a lot of women are become so financially strapped. And I could see it happening to me. That's why I said I had to, like, really take a stock of what I was doing in my, my own life um, because I had no husband, not say, to depend on, but no partner. So a lot of us do not take the time. And money-wise, we're not even having it together. So you have to teach your children, especially your daughters, right. that they have to get it as much possible, as put together as possible so that at the end of the day, you can take care of yourself. Okay, now we, we're speaking with Sandy Daly here, author, uh, host of the Daily Grind show. You can check out her website, sandydaily.com, her book, Whose Vagina Is It Anyways? We're talking a lot about the female right. part of it and whatever, and this is what the book is about, and like I said, we'll go into a little bit more in just a few minutes, but um, now let's just switch over to the men's side mm -hmm. of it. Like, what, what are the men, like you say there's an eye-opener for men. What's the eye-opener same thing with whose vagina is it really? I mean, when I wrote that, people, the guys were saying to me, Sandy, the book made sense. What about us guys? And I said, well, I'm, I'm a very compromising person. I'm fair. I'm equal. So there has to be a book. So I'm definitely coming out with whose penis is it really? And the guys are saying to me, this is what they like in a relationship, but this is what they don't like. So I'm definitely working with four guys right now to put that book up. But they need to, because not every woman is right for you. Right, right. <laughs> Yep. Us ladies, we have to make proper decisions about who to choose. A guy has to do the same thing. And I think guys are, you know, I was talking to one guy yesterday. And he was talking about some girl that he met on the weekend. She was a model and blah, 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 whatever. I said, and at the end of it, I said, well, because you keep on choosing the wrong woman. Right. You know, women are all gold diggers. No, they're not. They're good looking women, good women like myself. But there are other women that I know of that you could choose. But you're choosing the wrong woman. Yeah. On for hours. You're choosing the wrong woman. Where do you find the right woman? She's out there. Uh, <laughs> no. 
loyalty. You look for women that are ambitious. She doesn't have to have the money, but she's got a drive. She's got her own drive. She doesn't look for you to give her everything, but it doesn't mean that you can't help her out. Do you know what right. I'm saying? But there are good women out there that deserve your attention, but stop looking for the women that are materialistic, the ones that are only interested in Gucci and Pradas and all that stuff. Yeah. I'm not saying that that's not anything wrong with well, that. With the way gas prices is, I like, <laughs> You know, there are good women out there, and as I said, for me, I like a guy that is ambitious. I don't care what it is that you do. Right, okay, so whose vagina is it really? The do's and don'ts for every single married gal, an instructive eye opener for men. Uh, Sandy Dealey wrote this, and um, Sandy, what we're talking about here is with relationships. I love this. You have a lot of do's and uh, don'ts. What are maybe the top? Uh, let's say the top two do's. Right. So we don't go into this a lot, so people can actually buy the book at uh, sandydaily.com. They can find it or Amazon mm -hmm. or um, probably Barnes and Nobles. And Amazon, that. Barnes and Nobles, although but Amazon comedy they go, oh, listen, you gotta have an exclusive relationship with us, but uh, whatever. <laughs> um, and Kindle as well, so okay. I have it in Kindle. Um, and other bookstores, like I have it, it's totally sold out in Jamaica. Beautiful. I have it in like five stores in Jamaica, Boston, New York, and this summer is coming up, so we'll be doing a lot of book signings. Uh, going to like Harlem Book Fair and you know just getting out there as much as possible. Nice. But the top ones that I like are, you know, be truthful to yourself in the sense that say you know you have to like put yourself first. That's number one. You know I love the, my favorite quote in everything is to thine own self be true. Yeah. You know by Shakespeare and that once I really understood that everything just made sense for me. Um, stay away from married men. <laughs> okay. You'll get. His wife for you, ladies, please. Um, and if he, he loves her, obviously, um, get out of a, a bad relationship if you ever have had that situation happen to you. Because I did have that for years, and I stayed in an abusive relationship that did not do me any good, and I should have left from a long time ago. But as I said, like when I, as an older woman now, I see those things and I know what to do and what not to do. Uh, why do um, two questions? Here we'll go first one. Why do uh, some women go for the married men? Because they're kind of, de not desperate, they feel like they, they're at a loss for guys that are out there. We're having this conversation that there are no good men out there. I still that believe that there are good men out there. But women, you know, they go through this phase, and a lot of us don't even want relationships anymore. Like, the guy can't come home to you. Why are you even going to go there, you know? Um, if he can't give you everything. And I've had married men who have actually put this point to me, go, Sandy, having half a man is better than no man. No, it's not. You know? Having half a man, can't stay in my bed at night. I don't want you yeah. there. So I don't know why they're going for married men, but I think that they don't understand Joe, what they deserve and they don't know what they deserve. I know what I deserve. So right. me having half a man is not going to work for me unless you can stay until like 6 o'clock in the morning. It ain't making no sense. Okay, there you go. See, <laughs> and I kick the girls out of my bed because I snore. <laughs> they just are dead. They just <laughs> You know, there are a couple of things. There are, there are new products out there. There, there we now, um, I want to get serious about here for a second is, uh, and you and you touched upon it, and you said that you were in an abusive relationship, and yeah. you've been in, in it in a long time, and there are females that are in abusive relationships, uh, probably currently now, or have been in the past, and it takes forever for them, it seems to be forever, for them to get out of it. What are some tips or helpful hints that you can give to our ladies viewers out there to open their eyes to see what they're in? and maybe how to get out of it. Well, definitely talk to somebody. You know, when I actually, when it actually came out and my mother knew, my father at the time who was living found out, they were so livid, they were mad at me because I never spoke to anybody, you know? Um, so talk to a family member, a friend, reach out to people because there are others that can help you. And what took me to leave was my son at the time saying, Mom, uh, who was six years old, I can never forget this day, he says, Mom, you have to leave. Right. And they were, this was his own father. I mean, I have no shame in saying that because I know I'm telling him the truth. Yeah. Um, so I lost everything. I lost a lot at a home that I couldn't take care of. You know, we were, he was helping me with that. I had to give that up, Joe, and, you know, stayed in my mom's basement for quite a few years to kind of get myself back up because I couldn't financially manage. Right. Um, I wasn't, I didn't finish my degree at the time, so I didn't have my education on point. So everything was just kind of falling to the wayside. So, but for me, or to, for the young ladies, definitely reach out to somebody and leave that situation because you never know what could have happened or what's going to happen. It could have been worse for me. Right. Um, I ended up in the hospital a couple of times um, because of black eyes and stayed away from my parents, my mom's home. You know, so every Sunday in Jamaica, you go over to your mother's house and yeah. you have dinner. Yeah, I had to lie a couple of times why I couldn't come over. Right. 
so for me, it was just very difficult to have to go through that. But it took also my children, um, seeing the, looking at them, their boys, I didn't want them to think that this was okay. Right. And this was a very, very pivotal reason, one of the reasons why I left, because I didn't want him to do this to other people. See, awesome. And you were able, not awesome that it happened, but you were able to get through it and live through it and be able to speak it. And, speak, right. And, and now, I mean, I've forgiven that person, not obviously never to be in that situation again. I've yeah. taken all the steps. I made sure that I didn't put myself in any situation where we had to be in an argumentative situation. Yeah. Got the child support all worked out, so we, you know, I wasn't put in a bad position for myself, and um, and 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 we're friends. Well, at least good people together as parents, because yep. what happened with me was just a situation with myself. But uh, I never wanted him out of my children's lives, you know. No, so no, I'm perfect. So let's go back here now to the book. Whose vagina is it anyway? Or, or whose vagina is it really? Yeah. And. Um, you end up, uh, you're, you do the daily grind, you do the acting, come from Jamaica. What, what possessed you to come up with this book here? Who's right, Jones well, definitely. Well, I was dating a guy for, in Ohio um, for a little while, and we broke up, you know. Um, and then I didn't hear from him, Joe, for like three, four months. And one night I was actually writing a story to send in to the column, um, to the papers in the States. And a phone call came in, and it was like, hey, Sandy, what's up? It was from him. And I thought, okay. So it was kind of chatting away, and the next thing I knew, the conversation led to so i hope you haven't good given your you good you know what to anybody else and i thought what the hell excuse me that's all right <laughs> well. and i thought oh, i haven't heard from you for months and yeah. that is a question that you're asking me so i immediately put down the article that i was writing because it was a saturday night i was writing the article and i sent it into my editor and i titled it who's vagina i actually titled it worse who's you know what is it really <laughs> it's my mother she's got a you know what Writing anything else? I'm not. That's it. Nothing else is coming from me unless you run it. And I, he ran. He wrote, "Whose vagina is it really?" Yeah. Oh my God, Joe, I've never received so many emails. Oh, I bet that's that. That's a controversy title. Just. It was crazy because I didn't mean to do it. It's not like I sat there and thought about something controversial to write. Yeah. It just happened because that's how I am. I'm very reactionary. Yeah, it was very spur of the it moment. And I thought I was in the process of putting together a book because people were saying, Sandy, we love your column and stuff. And I thought after the emails and the calls that came into the, the, the paper and people were like, what? I can't believe she wrote this. I thought, that's it. I'm telling my book, Whose Vagina Is It Really? Awesome. And I took off like that. Crazy. Beautiful. So Whose Vagina Is It Really? Um, you, you sent it around. Now, we, we have a little uh, conflict, mm -hmm. though. Um, uh, I, I'm going to say allegedly so I don't get right. in trouble. But... Uh, Tell, tell me a little bit about the conflict that we have here with the book. Well, I sent this in last, um, so it came out June 2010. Yeah. Okay. And I was looking for interviews. I was doing a lot of interviews. I'd been in Jamaica, I'd gotten on the radio, I'd done a lot of stuff. So I sent it in, like I usually do, to um, other, like, uh, television stations, to one particular one. Yes. I sent it in to Chelsea lately, uh, um, Chelsea Handler. Yeah, Chelsea Handler. Sure. Yep. So I sent her the book in an email, and I said, listen, I'd like to get on to your uh, show just to do, like, an interview, like what we're doing. Yeah. And I thought, okay, you know, I kept on moving. I don't really stick with things yeah, that I didn't. Yeah, just keep on going. I just keep on doing my other stuff. It, it happens, it happens. So... Was I sent it in and I didn't hear from her for like three months. It was like November. I didn't hear from her for three months. And I thought, I didn't think of anything of it yeah. because she didn't have to have me on. Um, but I thought she'd get a kick out of it because people always say that my com comedic style is kind of like hers and, you know, they call me all kind of names. So I thought she'd get a kick out of it and kick out of it. And the next thing I know, um, in uh, January of 2011, there was a new show coming out from her production company entitled Whose Vagina Is It Anyway? Right. My book is entitled Whose Vagina Is It really? really? And it was three months after I sent it in. So I, TMZ wanted a story. A bunch of other people wanted a story. But they, of course, of course wanted you to sue this person and all that kind of stuff. And I thought, let me just kind of sit on it for a second and kind of do stuff. So I'm in talks with a few people. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I've sent this into Chelsea lately, and um, my title, as I said, is Whose Vagina Is It Really? And she took took that and, and months after created Whose Vagina Is It Anyway? All right, so if you're watching out there, Chelsea, Chelsea? and Chelsea's people, <laughs> why did you... <laughs> the same. Just give credit to Sandy. Thank you. For it. Um, but allegedly, I said that you would steal this, but... Mm -hmm. uh, um, yeah, it'd be interesting to find out from uh, your people out there why and how you got your name of the show. 
And, and the thing is, I have no problem with saying it because I can back this up 100%. I've got my emails that I yeah. kept. I've sent it, a book to her. So I have no issue with saying it because I know I'm not lying. Exactly. You know, I'm a single black woman trying to make it. <laughs> um, but you know what I mean? Like, I have no problem with saying it. I, if she had said to me, Miss Daly did this and sent this in, I would have no problem. But you don't do that. And no. this happens all the time in exactly. this business. Give credit where credit is due. So oh. I'm not going gonna to come against it. I mean, I feel it's a, a great like kind of kudos to me. But at the same time, I created that. And I, I'm in talks to do a play uh, and hopefully a film from that. So I don't want people saying that I stole Chelsea Lately's exactly. um, title. Exactly. It was yours that was It was mine. So, yeah. So we get that straight. And uh, we want to keep that in uh, terms if anything happens. We want to yeah. know updates and that would be good. And, uh, and if we hear anything, we will definitely, definitely let, you know. let you know. But I'm in talks with folks right now to see where this can go. So okay. I have no issues with that because this is my title. Yeah, so there you go. So Whose Vagina Is It Really? Initially by Sandy Daly. And that's S-A-N-D-Y-D-A-L-E-Y dot com. You can go to her website to find her book, to hear her audio podcast across the nationwide and American-wide of the Daily Grind and also, um, you can probably look on the internet to find her articles that she does write yeah. for uh, New York and Boston. And uh, and I'm going to be translated into Spanish now. So. Oh, there we go. Amanda, um, Amanda she paper. is the chocolate. That robot work hard. Thank you very Thank much you for very taking much, your Joe. time, for being here with us. I know <laughs> a you're good a time. busy lady. You're more than welcome to come here anytime. I will definitely do I that. I definitely want to have and read the uh, the the male version. Okay. Who's you can have, I'm going to give this to you. Oh, this awesome. is your This is good. Whose vagina is it really? And uh, look out for whose penis is it really? And trust me, it's definitely not mine. <laughs> Entertainment Extra with Joe Crawford here on Remick TV. And again, thank you very much. Thank you Sandy very much, Daly. Joe. Bye, guys. Keep it all tuned here on Remick TV because we have great shows all for you. And don't forget to sign up. We know what you're watching. Just sign up. It's free. And refer your friends, too. Take care.